Your wedding song. Hands up if that's your wedding that's song. That's my wedding song. <laughs> Two hands. <laughs> and my leg too. <laughs> okay, we definitely have with us the one, the only, my favorite Maven. I don't care what anybody else I says. I think we need to keep our hands up there just to hail him. Yes. But we hail you. My favorite Maven. Don't do that, Charlie. <laughs> Thank you for to have you. Always yeah. good to have you. Yeah. All right. So that song, Wait For Me, is one of my favorite. But we know that you've had another one. But let's look yes. at the journey between when you dropped Wait For Me video and okay. recent, your recent video, Hallelujah. Yeah. You've had a couple of other songs and yes, videos yes, in between. Tell yes. us about them. Uh, uh, first of all, it's been a great ride so far. And I'm absolutely grateful for um, every good thing that's come my way. Yeah, I've had a couple of songs down. Um, I mean, first, the ma first major song was Wait For Me. Um, but of course, I've had other songs like My Beautiful Love. Um, there was another called Love Don't Lie Before Wait For Me. And, and then there was Romeo and Juliet and Our Love. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Now, yeah. being signed to a record label can always either make or break you as an artist. It yeah. depends on the record label, it depends on your sound and what they try and do to you. Yeah. What has your experience been like being under a record label? And is that something that you see for yourself in the long run? Or do you want to uh. go solo? Well, uh, first of all, I, before, before I joined Mavens, I wasn't exactly, um, I didn't have as much of the audience I have now. Um, so yeah, it did wonders for me. Of course, I understood people's concerns at that point when it was announced that I was joining Mavens because it was, it was like a very unlikely um, combination because my sound wasn't exactly Afrobeat. And then I was joining like um, a majorly Afrobeat record label. But of course, um, when I, first time I met Jazzy, he loved my sound for what it was. I think he's his first a fan. He was always a fan, and he was just looking for ways to get my music to push it out there. Um, so yeah, of course, um, I think it was the right move, and I'm absolutely enjoying my stay at Mavens. All right. Good. Now, since you became a Maven, you became this big superstar <laughs> that's performed on major stages, including Big Brother, Niger Big Brother yes. Nigeria. How yes. was that for you, by the way? Amazing. It was like first time. It was, first of all, it was like my the first time I was traveling out of the country, and. Um, and then I, I heard, just before I went on stage, I heard that it was like, it was 45 million people um, watching. And I was like, oh my God, like this is a huge, this is absolutely huge. And I had to make an impression. Of course, I was kind of nervous before I went up stage. Even after I performed, I was like, oh God, I wish that was good. I wish, I hope that was good. And then I, I went online and then it was everyone, was, everyone was Now, like, you just Yo. mentioned that this was the first time you traveled abroad. Yes, it was. There's something about you, John. You're vulnerability, your sincerity, your honesty. And even though you have this celebrity status, you always try to retain the personality of this boy next door by your post on Instagram, yeah. you're putting about how you're entering bikes to go to the market <laughs> and how you still keep up your regular life. What would you say is the reason why you do that? And what would you say are some of the things that have helped you to become this person, this simple person that you are? Um, well, I, 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 I'm from um, a conservative, like humble, background and my dad my dad and mom they're pastors and I guess growing up um, like that kind of made me um, I'm kind of introverted in a way so I don't I don't really like to like be very out there um, but yeah I I, th I guess it was the upbringing and I I, th I think someone told me along the line that you know, if you're not careful with the industry with being in the spotlight you may get lost and try to and um, start looking for ways to, to, to keep up, to be extravagant, to be flashy and all that stuff. So I figured if, if I was able to learn to um, just keep it simple and just continue to be that regular guy you've always been. Of course, people don't, don't see it as something a, super, a star or a celebrity should do. But I mean, I want to be able to live like a simple life and be happy with it and be um, satisfied with, little, with the little things I have. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now, you performed on a stage in front of 45 million people. Yes. And live performance is not beans. And we already <laughs> know that. But what are the things, what are the ins and outs that people don't know as to what it actually takes to put on a great live performance? Uh, well, honestly, it's not, it's, not, it's not as easy as a lot of people. Because sometimes when people don't perform live or when they're doing backing tracks, people will go like, you can't sing live again. But the thing is, first of all, the sound has to be right. The sound has to be good for it live performance. I've performed at places where um, the sound is just straight up terrible and you're just wishing you did backing tracks instead of having to use a microphone that you can barely even hear yourself. Um, so those are some of the things. But at the same time, there's also the, 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 um, the technicalities with bringing your band, your live band, 
um, sometimes people are not ready for, to pay for you bringing like a team of 10 people, 10 band members, accommodation, transportation, and all that. So they'd rather you just come yourself and sing, and then you, you have to you do a backing track. So I guess it's a lot of things involved. But um, personally, I love live music, and yeah, live music is kind, kind of my kind of music. They oftentimes criticize artists who perform, you know, over their tracks. Yeah. If, on sometimes when they decide to perform live, some artists are criticized because they're like, oh, you don't sound like what you sound <laughs> in the song. But there's one thing I know, your voice is the same over and over again. So I'm going to put you on the spot because we're about to talk about your song, okay. Hallelujah. So can you do for us a verse in your song or is, you know, the chorus or something? Okay, from Hallelujah? Yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I've not done vocal exercise this morning, so oh, it's, fine. it's not very good. Don't, don't, please forgive me. Um, I don't dare love you for a long time, my dear. It'd be like say you know, no, say I care. And I wish you knew what I'm feeling for you. You're so extraordinary. And that's no ordinary thing. <laughs> 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 See, when well, I that, said all the sweethearts at the start, maybe everybody thought I was joking. Lila. Olive is melting live on Hello Nigeria, people. Melting. She's melting. Go on, go on. Your voice is beautiful. Your voice is rich. And I think Thank you. that was such Thank a fantastic you. song. You have a collaboration with Simi. Yes. The song it's kind of like my first collaboration, like my own song that I've ever wanted someone, someone to do with me. Ever. You chose Simi. Why? Yeah. That was like the number one collaboration I've always wanted to do. Like, I'd, I'd always been looking forward to working with Simi, making music with her, because I think her voice is special. Like, um, there's not a lot of Nigerian artists, like, I'm so into their music, but her music is absolutely breathtaking. First time I heard was when I was still in the university. I think it was like 100 or 200 level. There was a song back then called O'Reilly, and I've been stuck since then. I remember that. And so, yeah, her voice is absolutely, and I wanted, so wanted to make music with her. So when it finally happened, I was, like, super, super excited. I'm Amazing. glad people love it. Amazing. Now, tell us a bit about, let's speak about your style. Okay. Every artist has to have their own particular look, they say, so on and so forth. How has, that, how has that been for you? Was that something that you were used to before you jumped into the industry, or have you had to start crafting your own style and putting something out there? Uh, honestly, the, the sound as it is right now, it was not always like that. Um, because at some point I was trying to get, find an ad identity um, with my music. Because at that point, I had too many, maybe too many people around me telling me, hey, you should do this, you should do that, you should try this, try that. So I guess I was trying, I was trying a lot of things. I was trying hip hop, I was trying high life, I was trying R&B, rock music and all that. But um, at some point, I think it was 2015, early 2015, I, I, I found the music of Mumford & Sons. They are this British, amazing Love British, them. yeah, British, um, British rock band, folk band. And then I was like, what if I did something like this, but then just switched it up and added Pigeon English, added um, percussion, African stuff, and see. It was kind of like an experiment that worked, and I'm absolutely grateful that it did. And now, not only are you a singer with a unique voice, you're also a producer, and you yeah. produce all your songs, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going to have a feel of his song in which he featured Simi Hallelujah. When we come back, let's take a look at this video. Enjoy the video. We will come back and wrap up the conversation with Johnny Drill. Now, enjoy this one. It's called Hallelujah. My baby loves me. <laughs> I'm not the one singing. We have the baby. Hallelujah. <laughs> the things he does for me. Boy, if I could read your mind, I wonder if I... Okay. I think we need to. I think we need to give Olive a, a third career. So it's presenter, actor, no, and no, singer. No, no, this thing that one is just for career. Right? Let's just live it. I should come around and fool around in your studio the one day. Sure, but let's sure, talk about this song, Hallelujah. Okay. How long did it take you to write the song? And did you write it from a place of personal experience? Because this is a story of a young man who wanted to tell his heart to a girl that he liked, but yeah. did not have the liver to. Yeah. A little bird told me that the girl that you're talking about is on your Instagram. And you stalk her page all day. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, so why have you not told her that you like her? Well, it is kind of... It was, it was and it's still kind of complicated. Um, I don't want to say, talk about it too much because I'm just going to shoot myself in the foot. So. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. You won't give us any little detail? No, absolutely not. Does she know you like her? May, yeah, I think Does she, so. Do you think she likes you back? I don't know. What's the worst that I'm not sure. Happen? Yeah, you know, that's why I said it's very complicated. It's not that simple. I mean, I've had people sliding into my DM asking me if I'm the one. 
<laughs> like, only is he talking about you? I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I'm the what? one. I, it, I don't. It, I don't, it, don't worry. It's not. It's not me. I don't think I'm the one. I don't think. Why would you think you're not? No, because I knew <laughs> you and I are closer hey. than that. Because if I was the one, you would tell me. When Hello Nigeria turns into <laughs> speed dating. <laughs> now, very very quickly, the video mm -hmm. the video stuck out. I yeah. don't think I've ever seen a video that's been directed here in Nigeria that looks the way your video looked. And yeah. it took me it took me to start thinking about people like what's this woman's name, Jesse. British, oh, yeah, Bob, yeah, yeah. like people like that, right? And yeah. I love the video. Who directed it? It was uh, Max. Max. He's, he's shot all my videos so far. And did you give him the creative direction or did you just say, this is the song, this is what I want to go for? Well, and... the idea itself was Simi's idea, actually. Amazing. Um, yeah. But she is so creative. Absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm really grateful that she was very involved with the whole process right from the start to mm. the finish. Uh, it's not unlike some others where you just, just show up put your verse in and show up for videos and all that and it's gone. She was very involved. Exactly, exactly. Okay, but it was do, Max and... Yeah. If you could do one thing differently from that song, you know, now that the song is out, it's gotten very wide reception, but if you could do anything differently, what would it be? Uh, nothing really. I think, because I listen, I, when I make music, I listen over and over and over and over. So um, I have to get to that point where I'm like, yo, I, I don't think I want to add anything more. I don't think I want to remove anything. So yeah, I think it was what I wanted and I won't touch it anymore. Brilliant. So what can we expect from Johnny Drill for uh, the rest of the year? Absolutely amazing. More music, more music. Um, this is the first year ever I'm dropping more than one song because I'm usually dropping one song every year. But this year I've dropped two singles already. And of course, I'm going to drop more. Of course, um, how, many more? Huh? <laughs> how many more? How many more? I can't tell you for certain, but uh, maybe one, two. Okay. They're about, yeah. I think I may just change my mind on being a video vixen. You know, <laughs> I told you just yesterday that I can't be a video vixen. I think I'm starting to change my mind. Oh, good. Oh, uh, yeah. So, and then we're planning a concert, um, a private concert very soon. Do so. we get invites? Absolutely. I'll, I'll send You'll not invite us. We will crash the I'll party. Course, Johnny, if you had the opportunity to say this one thing to that somebody that you're nervous to say this one thing to, what would you say to her? Just imagine that she's in the camera, your camera, and what would you say to her? I really like you, and it's true. There is only one, just you. Yeah. I find it hard to say. I wish you knew. I am on your Instagram all day, stalking you. <laughs> <laughs> See the way they are looking at me. I can feel guys looking at me. Because I'm not in the pick up the one. I'm not the one, guys. I am not the one. If I were the one. Always just thinking you're not the one. I'm not, I'm not the one. one. That's the thing. Speaking what actually makes you one, think you're not the one? Now or forever one. hold your peace. <laughs> it's all of the one. We're putting you on the spot on live Speak TV. Now, you can't, you can't do that to me. <laughs> You can do that to me. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This Let's is where we wrap things up. Let's take some today in history. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Thank you for us, having Johnny. me. It's, it's always good to Johnny, like. thank you. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.